Hello, my name's Andrew, and as you probably already guessed, I live in Australia. Moving along, we'll take a closer look at basic components, starting with the application software. In my case, I'm using a Macintosh computer with two monitors, and the first thing you need to check is your Wi-Fi connection. Make sure that you're connected to the, the Wi-Fi-OBD2 adapter that is plugged into the breadboard. Connection details are IP address 192.168.0.10 and the port is 35000. You should then see the system connecting through that Wi-Fi adapter and the ECU will respond. This takes a little little while, but eventually you'll see uh, highlighted in green a statement saying that it's it's made a, a connection to the uh, ECU device. Later on, when we talk about repairing and testing the ECU itself, we'll go into this uh, connection sequence in much more uh, detail. An important tool when repairing PCBs especially ECUs, is a microscope. In my case, I've uh, adapted a Pentax film camera and fitted a digital um, sensor from a web camera. This has the effect of giving a very narrow field of view and probably only a few degrees. And by mounting it above the uh, ECU that I'm working on, I can examine the circuit board in great detail. For example, I can read the part number of the CPU chip, which is almost impossible to see with the naked eye. Mounted directly above the ECU under test is a lead flat panel, a source of light. I can adjust the intensity and I can also adjust the color temperature. It's the preferred lighting method for professional photographers. Also on the bench is a four-in-one soldering station. It consists of a temperature-controlled uh, soldering iron, a temperature-controlled hot air gun, and it also has a built-in um, variable uh, DC voltage power supply with uh, current uh, monitoring and uh, overload protection. As well, it serves as a digital uh, voltmeter. On the left-hand side of the breadboard, I have mounted a 16-pin OBD female connector, the very same connector that is installed in your car. This allows me to easily plug in OBD adapters and test them as well. Obviously, I need to have a, an OBD adapter plugged into the breadboard so that I can communicate with the application software on my desktop computer. I use a Tektronix TDS220 uh, two-channel oscilloscope. It works perfectly for analysing the CAN bus. However, if you needed to analyse the data structure, you would need a, a more elaborate oscilloscope for that purpose. I've connected channel 1 of the oscilloscope to the CAN high bus and channel 2 of the oscilloscope to the CAN low bus. And you can see that I've used a shielded cable, strain relief, and coming up through the breadboard. The shields are connected to the signal ground and the inner conductors are connected to the high and low of the CAN bus respectively. You'll also notice that on each end of the CAN bus there is a 120 ohm termination resistor. We'll talk about more about that later on. You'll also notice there is a 12 volt uh, DC uh, bus which uh, originates from the power supply in the soldering station and there is a K line. You need to set the uh, time base speed, the trigger level and the two uh, inputs to the correct uh, uh, sensitivity setting. The ECU that we will be testing in this video is manufactured by Bosch. It's a MED 9.5.10, was probably built in the year 2006. It's an extremely well designed and well manufactured uh, device using the highest quality circuit boards and components. It's built to last 
the lifetime of the vehicle, everything about it is high quality. It's unlikely that it would fail in normal service. However, we're going to go ahead and take it apart. So it's housed in a very strong die cast aluminium case, which is in two parts, and the circuit board is glued in place to prevent moisture entering into the case. It's uh, very difficult to get apart. It's actually a, uh, a sealant that will soften if heated. So the approach to taking it apart is to heat the entire die cast ca uh, case, uh, top and bottom, with a hot air gun to about 50 degrees C. You will need to leave it at that temperature or maintain it at that temperature for quite some time so that the sealant softens and then over a period of time with great care and lots of patience you can very carefully prise apart the the two die cast sections eventually remove the circuit board it took me quite a long time to do that an examination of the circuit board shows that it's double sided there are components on each side of the circuit board we need to first of all focus on the three electrolytic capacitors there are two large yellow capacitors and one smaller blue uh, electrolytic. You must examine those carefully for any swelling or leakage of electrolyte. They are very high quality, so it's unlikely that you'd ever see any damage to these electrolytics. Then we need to look at both sides of the circuit board for obvious signs of corrosion or any damage. The soldering on the circuit board is first class. It's unlikely that you would ever see a dry joint. So having uh, carefully studied both sides of the circuit board, you can then power it up and verify that there is 12 volts DC present on the circuit board. The easiest way to do that is measure across one of the yellow electrolytics as uh, they're connected directly to the 12 volt bus and then locate the three terminal 5 volt regulator that powers the IC devices on the board and verify that there is 5 volts DC present. Then your next step is to connect up to the breadboard and you'll notice that there are two very large connectors. One is a 60 pin and one is a 94 pin. We don't use the 60 pin in this breadboard. So on the 94 pin connector, pin 6 pin 87 and pin 92 are connected to the 12 volt DC power. Pin 1 is the chassis and signal ground, the negative return from the 12 volt power supply. Pin 86 is the K line. Pin 67 is the CAN bus low. Pin 68 is the CAN bus high. The next step is to make temporary connections to the 94 pin AMP connector on the ECU. I use uh, 1.5 by 0.8 millimeter female terminals, part number 57539 from nava, n a r v a dot com dot a u. I use color coded wires and solder them and cover them with heat shrink tubing. It's a tricky operation to do, but uh, it's only temporary. And